the Miami Dolphins earned just their second win on the season in Week 9, as they defeated the Houston Texans by a score of 17-9 at Hard Rock Stadium on Sunday. Houston struggled for much of this game. They were unable to keep the pressure off of Tyrod Taylor which led to multiple costly mistakes including an interception in the end zone that was snagged by Javon Holland. Miami offense, without Tua Tungavailoa, didn't look terribly different. They did commit four offensive turnovers, and one on special teams, but they mostly got the ball in the hands of their two best players on offense. Their defense's dominance will be contributed to the Texans' ineptitude, but it was a solid effort that should be recognized. Here are the winners and losers from the Dolphins' win over the Texans. Winner. Tight end Mike Jasicki. Jasicki is the life of this team. His energy is infectious. Whether he's angry at his guys for not lining up correctly or celebrating every catch he makes, he gets the team going. The tight end made four receptions for 54 yards in this game including these two amazing one-handed grabs. Loser. Right tackle Jesse Davis. Week after week we watch the offensive line play bad football. Davis is probably at the top of the list for most concerning performances. This week he allowed pressure on Jacoby Brissett multiple times which is part of the reason that they turned the ball over so frequently on offense. The Dolphins traded a draft pick for offensive tackle Greg Little back in August and have kept him inactive every week. He might not be better than Davis, but he has to be given a chance. Winner. Wide receiver Jalen Waddell. The rookie wideout is the chain mover on this offense. His ability to get separation and make tough catches makes him a perfect part of the group and a guy that any team would want. Against the Texans, Waddle brought in a team-high eight catches for 83 yards. He's still not being used as a deep threat, but with the poor offensive line play, they probably couldn't get him the ball deep if they wanted. Loser. Left tackle Liam Eichenberg. Like Davis, Eichenberg struggled mightily in this Week 9 contest. He allowed a ton of pressure to make its way to Brissett and wasn't much help in the running game against one of the league's worst defenses against the run. He's just a rookie, but if this trend continues, there will have to be yet another move made on the line. Winner. Defensive Emmanuel Ogba. Ogba was once again the best defender on the field for Miami on Sunday, except, this time, his contributions could be found on that stat sheet. The defensive end recorded 2.5 sacks in this game as well as a batted pass at the line. If he continues this performance he will surely earn himself a nice payday this offseason, whether it's from the Dolphins or not. Loser. Quarterback Tua Tungavailoa. Whenever you're a starting quarterback and your team wins without you, it can't be a great feeling. Yeah, you're happy for your guys, but you know they did it without you. Tungavailoa has to be feeling this and more. With all of the rumors that have been swirling about replacing him, the Dolphins winning without him isn't a great look. With a quick turnaround for a game on Thursday, it's unknown if Tungavailoa will play against the Ravens, but, if he doesn't and Miami somehow pulls off the unthinkable, those talks will get much worse. The latest on Tua, including status for Thursday night. Tua Tungavailoa could have played in an emergency situation Sunday, but what that means for his status for the Miami Dolphins game against the Baltimore Ravens on Thursday night remains uncertain. Head coach Brian Flores provided an update on the second-year quarterback after the Dolphins' 17-9 victory on Sunday, explaining that the decision to keep Tungavailoa was made because the injury to the middle finger on his throwing hand prevented him from making all the throws he would need to make. Tungavailoa served as the backup quarterback as Jacoby Brissett went from start to finish against Houston, completing 26 of 43 passes for 244 yards with one touchdown, two interceptions and one lost fumble. Tua got hurt or banged it last week, against Buffalo, Flores said. Finished the game in Buffalo. He was limited all week. Look, he is tough. He tried to go. It really just became more of, how far could he throw? Would he be able to kind of make all the throws we needed him to make? We thought it was enough to put him in a backup role, and we felt like that was the best thing for the team, so we would have had to change some things offensively if he went in, if he had to go in, but Jacoby was able to finish the game. The Dolphins have a short week ahead of their game against Baltimore, but one would expect Tungavailoa to do his fair share of throwing to test out his left hand and see if he can play against Baltimore. Well, for Thursday it's still day-to-day, -day, Flores said. We just have to see how he is doing. It's a quick turnaround, so tomorrow, Tuesday, you know, and in the ensuing days. I mean, we knew he was limited. He was trying to go. He was trying to go. We were basically testing it every day to include today 
and we just felt like couldn't do it or couldn't do it and make all the throws that we needed to make, but he is close. Tunga Vailoa was listed as questionable on the final injury report of the week ahead of the game against Houston, and the decision to sit him out was made Sunday morning. The Dolphins decided against elevating quarterback Jake Dolagala from the practice squad Saturday, which did give hope that Tunga Vailoa would be able to go against Houston. We just felt like Tua at where he was at was better than making the elevation, Flores said. He's close, I would say, but it really was just more of how far can we make the throws we need to make, all of the throws we need to make. Unfortunately, it was the latest setback in what's been a tough season for Tua. Along with the rib injury, Tunga Vailoa had to answer questions regularly during his weekly media sessions about the Dolphins' interest in making a trade for embattled Houston Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson. With the trade deadline over and no trade for Watson consummated, the remainder of the 2021 regular season figured to serve as an audition of sorts for Tua to convince Dolphins management they already have their franchise quarterback on the roster and don't need to make a trade for anybody. But durability is one of the concerns with Tunga Vailoa and this latest development, right or wrong because it's kind of a freaky injury, certainly isn't going to help his cause. Like I said, it was really every day it was, all right, let's test it, let's test it, let's test it, Flores said. A little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better, and we just felt like we were better off going the route of going with Jacoby. It wasn't enough that we felt like we could make all the throws he needed to make. There's a lot that goes into that amount of practice, the type of game that normally normal games get into if you get into a whatever situation. We just felt like it wasn't, look, we're always going to do what's in the best interest of the team, and we felt like he just wasn't physically ready. Chances are we'll have to wait a bit before we find out whether that changes before or on Thursday night.